Hello and welcome to a ranked season 10 overview of carrier battles. Now you might be thinking, hey but Farah, I don't play carriers, why do I care? Well, we're going to talk today about not just what is the preferential carrier to pick, but also how do you play in said tier 10 battle if you are a destroyer, cruiser or battleship. Now the easiest way for me to do this, uh, since the carrier season hasn't started, or the rank season, is to use uh, WoW's tactics map. So I'm going to bring that up, and I'm going to showcase an example game, and how you might be expected to play differently from standard. Because you have to understand, most people who have played tier 10 ships recently have been in clan battles that doesn't have a carrier. And most people who play in uh, ranked uh, will not see a carrier. Like one game in 5, 10, 15, 20, depending on your region, the carrier games are the exception, not the commonplace, which means captains will be spec'd, not anti-air, and quite possibly not with defensive fire, but will be spec'd hydro, and as they are in clan battles, completely different setup. So when you go into a carrier game, uh, you're at a disadvantage, and the, your carrier has the advantage, so it means the carrier has more of an influence. Uh, one of the other kind of elements is some people choose not to play a carrier game. If they see a carrier in queue and rank, they say, oh, I don't want to do this, I'm going to leave. And if that's the way you want to play, that's fine, go for it. I am not the person to ask, how do I play in games that don't have carriers? Because I never see those. I only ever play carrier games. I only ever play carrier, which means I'm only ever in carrier games. So I only have one game mode that I need to focus on and I need to practice. However, when I go into these games, I am constantly typing saying, do this, do this, go here, telling them what to do. Because most people don't play with a carrier and have no idea that the game mode is fundamentally different. So that's what we're going to go and have a look at today. So let me bring up... Um, our tactics map, and I'll bring this up here. <clears throat> Hello, it's our tactics map. Hoodlulu. Okay, so this is Tears of the Desert. It is an accurate uh, redrawing, as I could make, of what I believe is going to be a map in the uh, Season 10. So this is a Tier 10 game. The enemy team has a Hakuryu. We, uh, that's playing 332. We are the midway spawning north, it's 222. And um, I've just made an, uh, a random assortment of ships. So we have a Z52, Hindenburg, Minotaur, Des Moines, Henry, because it's not like clan battles where you, you min max the best ships, you're going to have a mixture of everything. And the enemy team has a Republic, Zhao, Mosfel, Worcester, Hindenburg, and Yu Yang. And I realize I spelled Yu Yang wrong, but anyway, right. So here we are, okay? Now, in this particular map, there's a number of things to take into consideration when we go into Tier 10. The AA bubbles are quite large, 7.2 and 8.6 kilometers. We also have radar ranges, uh, ranging from 8.5 to 11.7, depending on the ship in question, which means the meta is going to be cruiser heavy. I, it, that's the same as it's in clan battles it's with the radar, and it's the same as it's going to be last season. So that's the same as going to be this season, I predict. Now, you may get games where you've got two, three, or four destroyers, and you may have games where you've got two battleships or whatever, but the fact is I believe most games in carry games to have multiple cruisers. And this is kind of like a worst-case scenario. So what happens when the game starts? Right? What, what would you say, what would you do, and how would you play? Why is the midway better than the Hikuryu in this example? Right, well, let's have a look. This game starts out, right? The focus is going to be over the contention, and I believe this is the A cap. This is the neutral point that everyone's going to be going after, and the two uh, free caps are off to the side. So when this happens, realistically speaking, you want one ship to go off to the side. So whoever's closest, or preferably who is the most defensible against an enemy carrier, because they're going to be isolated from the group. You're thinking the Z-52 and the Yuyang are probably going to be outside in the camp. Wooster's going to snuggle up to this little island, and I'll say so in a while. Des Moines might snuggle up to this one. The Henry may go wide, the Hindenburg may be wide, and the Montana may try and get in a position so he's got angles of fire. Hindenburg, Mosva may go up kind of close. Republic's looking for angles on both sides because it's quite accurate. CVs aren't necessarily going to move. While in all of this is happening, you know, we are taking off with planes, and we're trying to spot where is the enemy, what's he doing... Um, where's he going? Now when this particular happens, <clears throat> we may want to see what the enemy on the enemy cap is, we might want to try and prevent him from spotting our, you know, our Minotaur in this example, capping our base, alright? The cap, the neutral cap, is not going to be uh, obtained immediately, because the Des Moines has a radar over the cap and can be fired up by everybody. The Worcester has a radar, as does the Mosfa, so the Yu Yang, and so does the Yu Yang have a radar, so the point, if, if he goes that way. So the cap isn't necessarily going to be grabbed, but here's the tricky element, okay? The Des Moines has a 7.2 kilometer AA bubble. 
right? But the Worcester has an 8.6 kilometer AA bubble, right? What does this mean? How is how is this important or significant for people to play? Well, I don't really have a term for this, but I'm going to call it objective AA creeping, unless someone can come back and give me a better. Wow, that's cool. I'll grab that in a second. Thanks, babe. Uh, YouTube highlight, we have burgers. So, um, what does it mean about AA objective creeping? Well, let me just move this out of the way. If I am the Wooster, okay, and I've moved up here, I now have an 8.6 kilometer AA bubble over the, uh, over the objective. That means the Yu Yang can move into the cap and he is covered. It is impossible for me as a CV player to strike that Yu Yang because he is inside a friendly defensive cap. So for the Yu Yang, he's probably going to be absolute on the edge and it is impossible for me to CV spot him. And it's going to come down to raiders and then pushing him off and that shooting type of element. And it's the same the other way around. The Des Moines has an A bubble, so he has an AA umbrella. So in that instance, the Z52 needs to stick within that umbrella. You see what I'm getting at here? If you're gonna go for objective, do it inside friendly A. Now that is assuming, of course, ships take defensive fires or have AA range. Des Moines might not have AFT, which you think he should, but he might not. And that's kind of the, the gambling that is of ranked. The Worcester may not have 8.6. He may have 7.2 kilometers because he doesn't have AFT or he doesn't have the module. But the fact is the Worcester always has a defensive fire. It's not like a choice between the, the, the two that the Des Moines has to make. So if, so if this is going to happen, you need to play patience and defensive. So what does the midway do? How does it play? How does, how does the, the two fighters from the midway deal with the three fighters from Hakuryu? Well, in this instance, you need to look at the beginning of the map of when the game starts and, real, and see who is vulnerable on the enemy team. Who can I armor, pierce, bomb, and delete? Now, we know we can kill the Wooster. We know we can also kill the Mosfa. And we can also delete the Zao in this particular instance. These are ships that are highly vulnerable to armor-piercing bombs. So with that in mind, we need to scout. So initial scouting, careful not to go into the unknown. If you don't know what's there, you don't want to lose planes. So you're playing in this sort of no-man's zone where you don't really go beyond a certain island point. You can fly more further south in this way, but if you don't go into the cap because AA could pick it off and the, the AA is so high that you don't want to lose planes. Because when it comes to fighter duels, you need planes at full strength. You can't have them weakened on, on lower numbers because you're going to lose in that sense. At the fire duel, that is. So I'm going to split up. Now I've spotted perhaps, oh, the enemy's got a Zao in the south. He is vulnerable. I can torp drop him, his AA isn't strong, he's stealthy, maybe that's why the team told him to go for that cap, but he is vulnerable. So in that sense, I know he's vulnerable to AP bombs. So I'm going to fly AP bombs with one fighter protecting down south, looking to engage this out. And at the same time, I'm going to fly the second uh, torpedo bombers and the fighter plane over to the west, thinking I may look for the Yu Yang, look for anyone that's moving at a position, look for anyone that may be out of range of, of the Wooster, you know, look for any targets of opportunity. And by advertising this to the enemy CV, in this case, the um, Akuryu, he's going to stretch his fighters out. Now, this middle fighter is going to have to choose. He can't win a one-on-one -on -one fight. He has, to, he has to commit. So he's going to commit fighters somewhere. Now, let's say he keeps one fighter in the north just because he's got Wooster AA and he has two fighters in the south. Well, that's fine because you're going after the Zhao. Zhao's here. You can try fighting both fighters two and one. You can do an aggressive strafe. Or alternatively, you just back off to your unfriendly Minotaur AA and you can't go for the attack. Maybe he sends the fight over here. Well, now you can one-on-one -on -one his fighter and then you can do an AP bomb attempt on the Zhao. You don't know if the Zao's got defensive fire. Unless you recognize the player and recognize that he takes it all the time, you can gamble and go ahead and strike. If you can uh, engage his fighter and be careful that he doesn't exit strafe and don't make it so that your AP bombs can get strafed, you can fly in, and if the Zao hasn't grabbed the capture point and then retreated back to his team, you can then drop him. Do huge amounts of damage. You may kill him, you may take off half of his health. But it just means he's another target you can go at later. And if your team moves down or maybe the battleship fires on him, you're going to wound him. So it's all about doing damage in the alpha strike. Alternatively, one other way to go about it is if the AA bubbles start overlapping. So, for example, let's say the Wooster's moved or we have an AA bubble that's also overlapping the Wooster. 
what I'm trying to get at here is that if your friendly AA is over an enemy target, right? So I want, let me let me pop over here. Let's say we have an example where we have a Minotaur that has 8.6 kilometer AA, all right? And we have a Yu Yang that is inside this 8.6 uh, bubble, right? Something like this. And the, and, the, and the Yu Yang is inside. Minotaur, and, and let's say the Minotaur's got small radar and he's not seen him that type of stuff. So we, we know the destroyer's there, or we know he's got radar, he's behind an island or something. The point is, he's inside our AA bubble. That means either A, I can scout him, or B, preferably, I'm going to try and torpedo drop him. Now, the enemy CV is going to say, oh, hang on a second. <clears throat> I need to defend my destroyer. So he's going to fly up, and he's going to fly inside the Minotaur's uh, bubble. Do not feel that you need to strike the destroyer. There's going to be 101 different reasons why you may or may not attack him. Um, and if it's not urgent, fall back. See if you can lure the fighters in. Oh, he's going to chase you. Oh, wait, there's a Minotaur. I'm going to back off. Odds are, if it's a uh, Des Moines, Wooster, Minotaur, he's going to lose a couple of fire planes. Reapply. Now, now go back. As soon as he pulls the fire back, threaten the destroyer again. Play this game of cat and mouse again and again until his fires get weakened. Alternatively, you can also use your fire to muscle in as well. And then if he chooses not to defend because the Yuyang is too far inside enemy AA, at that point you drop him and attack. And that's, that's where positioning of a cruiser and its AA bubble over target is very, very useful. And it's also why it's extremely frustrating if you're the enemy CV, Yu Yang, you need to get outside of the enemy AA bubble. I cannot help if that happens. And, and this is another problem uh, when both teams have overlapping AA like this. Now you have both have overlapping. So for me, it's very difficult to attack. And we can't, there's like a no fly zone in the center. And this is where it's better to have striking CVs than it is fighter CVs. Because if I am a fighter CV, a 422, and I have my fighters. I can't protect the Yu Yang with my fighters. I can't fly in and, and save him because I'm going into an AA death trap of the enemy AA. So it's not, it's not going to work. And at the same time, but if I have offensive planes, maybe I can attack. So if this is a Minotaur versus a Wooster, all right, and we, have, uh, we only have fighter planes, right? So I'm just going to move these out of the way. Oh, let me give you an example, right? Boom. So we've got these two overlapping uh, kind of AA bubbles, right? And for intensive purposes, there's enough of an overlap that the fighters... Look, there's a safe spot right here. See, behind the Wooster, there's a safe spot. This is why armor-piercing dive bombs are so good. With the armor-piercing dive bombs, if I know the Wooster's used his defensive fire, maybe he used it on torpedo bombers that I sent out earlier. Maybe I went to torpedo bomb the Yu Yang, right? And then the Wooster defensive fires, and he cripples or kills off the torpedo bombers, I get nothing done. I know the Wooster's used his defensive fire. So I'm going to have my fighters in a safe zone, which is just outside of his bubble, inside friendly area. And the Wooster, now you are in an extremely vulnerable position. And this isn't just Wooster, this is anyone that's vulnerable to AP bombs. That's Mosva, Zhao, Wooster, the whole works. And I say that because as soon as you've used your defensive fire to help friends or allies or whatever, anything like that, you are vulnerable for that cooldown period. Now you need to find a friend, you need to ask for fighter cover, or you need to run away. Whatever it takes to survive, because I am now going to send AP bombs at you, but I will send them through my friendly AA and then drop. So if I have these AP bombers coming in to attack, he may send in fighters, but now he's inside hostile AA, and now we can defensify them, and maybe I can bait back. Or alternatively, if I've got a window of opportunity where I need to attack, then I'm going to commit fighters because I know he's vulnerable, because I know the AP bombs can delete him in one hit. Or he moves that position, I do some damage, and the rest of the team shoots him and kills him. So it's, it's one of those instances where you need to play smart, when you use defensive fire, if you have it. And if you don't have it, you need to know you're extremely vulnerable. Don't stop behind an island. If you see there's an enemy CV uh, and you're a Des Moines and you do not have a defensive fire, tell your team, tell your CV, I do not have a defensive fire. I'm going to need some help here. I mean, there's 101 different kind of things going on about this. But essentially, we've talked about AA baiting, you know, you know, luring fighters and flying back. We've talked about objective AA camping. If you can get your AA as well as your radars over an objective, huge help to a CV. And if you can talk about holding defense fire, you realistically need to hold it for self-preservation. And you have to realize what's vulnerable uh, and what's the more threatening. Torpedo bombers are not the threat. Dive bombers are, especially the AP variants. What's this over here?
Anyway, this is north, right? So we're going to go over a quick little recap here. North is a horrendous map because the objective here is to get up close to the island as possible. If you can get up close to the island as possible, your AA bubbles overlap the center. It means you can't fly in here. Like this, see? See how much of an overlap there is? So you cannot attack. However, again, this is where the ability to strike comes into play. If you can armor piercing dive bomb the Wooster, or anyone else for that factor, um, maybe the Wooster is a bad example. Maybe we don't have a Wooster here. Maybe we have like a Mosfa. You know, it's moved up for radar, or maybe we have a Zao that's just kind of hanging out here. He may or may not have defensive fire. Because the Des Moines in range, and he has overlap AA on the Zao, um, I'm going to basically fly in an AP bomb. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not, now, the, the key here, sorry, because I'm, I'm, ram, I'm rambling on, is not to send all the bombers at the same time. He may or may not have a defensive fire. He may or may not have some hidden destroyer that's got a defensive fire that you don't see. You send in... Torpedo bombers, preferably torpedo bombers first, to threaten them with the torpedo bombers. Maybe get some hits, see if he panics them. If he defensive fires right on the edge of the AA, pull them back. Hold down the alt button, see if they're panicked. If he doesn't panic them, go in for the attack. Because he's inside hostile AA, fires don't mean anything. They can't do anything. They're just going to sit there. You go in, you do the attack. If he defensive fires and he panics them, great. Wait for the defensive fire to end. Send in the armor-piercing dive bombers. Maybe give them fire escort if it needs it. Delete them. If you are the Zhao in this instance, you have to realize that you are inside an enemy AA bubble and you are going to be vulnerable with or without a defensive fire. So th these, are, these are elements to it. There's 101 different extra reasons on what to do in this map and what to do in that map and how to play it. But just know that the safest thing you can do is to grab the capture point, for example, in Tears of the Desert and rejoin your team. Who's got defensive fires, who doesn't have it, stay together, play under under your your fighter cover if you can, stay outside of enemy radar range or enemy AA bubbles if you can, especially if you're vulnerable for certain periods of time. If you are resilient to AP bombs, like say the Republic, you don't necessarily have that much of a threat, or like the Hindenburg is trolling, is, is resistant to AP bombs. You are better at going by yourself because you are not going to be AP bombed. That means there's only a single strike from the midway. So. We, we go into it uh, as a bunch. Ultimately, it comes down to patience and reading the map and then deciding how to play. I mean, there's a lot to take in here, and, and I could give some examples. Plus, I'll stream the games themselves when I do it. But this is a kind of a crash course overview. As a destroyer, you need to be not only observant of enemy radar, which you may or may not have done in clan battles, but you also need to be observant of enemy AA ranges. And am I inside an enemy AA range? Am I inside friendly AA ranges? If I want to go for the cap, not only do I need to be inside friendly radar range, I actually need to be inside friendly AA bubble, even if it's just passive AA. And then alternatively, if you're going for the cap, am I inside hostile AA? Because if I'm inside hostile AA, CV, if he's good, is not going to give you any fire cover, unless it's like absolutely desperate. <coughs> Um, and that's that. So I think we'll call it quits for now in this video in the tutorial because we've, we've kind of covered many, many details. But ultimately, it's a case of patience, communication, and knowing your vulnerabilities and your weaknesses. It's no point saying, oh my goodness, AP bombs are broken OP when you die. You need to know going into the game if the enemy has a midway, or maybe you're at tier 8 and the enemy has armor-piercing American or German AP bombs, Know what your vulnerabilities are. Know if you are the ship that's going to be the target and work with it. Find a defensive, you know, fire friendly guy or talk to your CV. It's all about understanding what you're getting into and then working around it. The worst thing you can do as a, dest as a destroyer player is going off solo. Like, the worst thing you could do is going off on some sort of flank. If you have, if there's no friendly AA for either team, then it's very easy for the American and Japanese to isolate the destroyer and then cross drop them. And this is the same with a battleship. Anyone that goes isolated and leaves the team, leaves the collective AA bubble group, is stretching the, the CV because now I have to maybe fly on this side or now I need to commit my forces defending the Montana because the CV says, oh, look, here, here's an isolated Montana. I'm going to attack him and I'm going to bleed him dry. So being that solo warrior going off into the side, that's the worst thing you can do in CV battles. Focus on the objectives, focus on collective AA support, and have patience. It's not about getting the cap first, it's about spotting, dealing damage, on and the like. Anyway, that being said, I'm going to go back into some battles now. Hopefully this was an informative video, not too rambly, and look forward to um, stream highlights 
in recurring games. And also, because this was the same as Season 9, you can actually go back and check my YouTube playlist for Season 9 games, and you can see me playing the Midway and I cure you, and you see exactly what I'm talking about in this instance. So. Alright, until then, goodbye.